Hi, I'm Ernie Conover. Welcome to my shop. A pair of ancient tools that are still very useful today are a draw knife and a spoke shave. The roughing tool is a draw knife, which this is a nice little small flex cut, brand new out of the box, comes sharp, unlike many tools today. And this is one that uh, I made years ago in the 1980s in a company I had called Conover Woodcraft Specialties, Inc. This is about a six inch draw knife. This is about a five. But they're used uh, by holding them in your hands like this and pulling them towards you, always with a bevel up. And they allow you to quickly rough out a surface. And draw knives are usually used where you want a round peg or a curved surface of some type. Trades that used them were chair makers for the spindles in the back of Windsor chairs, coopers who wanted their barrel staves to have a uniform curve both on the inside and the outside, and wagon wheel makers who used them to make the spokes for wagon wheels. Chair makers uh, in particular, but many trades such as coopers, also had draw knives that were bent into a circle like this. And this was for scooping out the depression of a chair seat so that it would fit your derriere. That particular type of draw knife is usually referred to by chair makers as a scorp. Spoke shaves are a finishing tool that you use after the draw knife, and they come in two types. One is wood, and that's the oldest type. And they can be thought of as really a wooden jig that surrounds this blade and allows you to control how thick a chip it takes. This one is another one that I made in a company that I had before. Uh, this was probably made in the 1990s, and uh, it is plated with a blast brass plate right here to take up wear a little bit better. But uh, this uh, also has a adjusting mechanism where I can stick a little Allen wrench down in this hole once I take this nut off and bring it up and down, and that will control where that blade sits height-wise. This is a adjusting mechanism that dates back to the 1800s. Most people, when adjusting a spoke shave, will adjust it so that it takes a heavier shaving on one side and a lighter shaving on the other. I usually make the right side the heavier cut and work to the left to a lighter cut, but however you want to do that is up to you. Spoke shaves are also made in metal, and this is a bench dog shave, very nice, uh, and it has a essentially a small plane iron in it, and it can be thought of as a plane with handles on the side instead of front and back. And it allows you, again, to round surfaces and the same thing that we're going to cock the blade a little so it takes more shavings at one side than the other. This is essentially the same spoke shave but with a cylindrical sole so that it can do uh, inside arches these are a set of spoke shaves that were built in 1925 by a gunsmith in Xenia, Ohio, who befriended my father when 
he was stationed there during World War II. And he was a superb craftsman that built match rifles. And he actually made the patterns for these spoke shaves and had them cast in bronze and then fit all the parts into them. He actually used Stanley, a standard Stanley blade of that time for a spoke shave much like these that Stanley made. This is a smaller version. And these little pair are for very dainty work. And this one is actually not only cylindrical, it's cylindrical this way. It's what you call round both ways. And that's good for getting down into a little depression where you want to hollow an area out. Let's take a look at how these are used. Here I have a piece of ash in the vise. So it's a hypothetical back spoke for a Windsor chair, a small spoke for a small wheel, whatever you want. And our object here is to make this round. I'm going to start with this flex cut draw knife. And I've read my grain carefully. I have grain running this way. It's running slightly uphill this way. So I'm pretty safe to cut in this direction without splitting out. And I can just go in there and I can control that cut. I'm making a little snapped finally at the end. And you can see you can move material pretty fast with this. Now, Windsor chair makers and wagon wheel makers would usually do this out of what's called riven wood, and they would simply take a section of the trunk of a tree that was the length that they wanted the piece to be, and then they would split that into squares. And that gave them a piece with the grain running absolutely parallel down the center of this, and it made the piece both stronger and much easier to use a draw knife on. When I turn this over to do the other side, I am in a bit of a conundrum in that going this way on this piece may tear pieces off, as you'll see here. See how that wants to chip out ahead of the knife. I'm fine on this corner. Now again, they often used a shave horse for this, which was a bench that had a vise in front of you that you controlled with your feet. Here's a picture of one when we were building a timber frame shed uh, quite a few years ago. And you could see on the left that Tom Salo is arriving the pieces for the pegs for this timber frame. Charlie Weikert and Brian Gray on the right are each on a shave horse using draw knives to bring these pegs to the size they want them. The finished pegs are in front. So again, riven wood is often better for this. We would now go to our spoke shave and going with the roughing side, I can a little better peel off nice, even, and then I go to the finer side. The metal shave, as I said, is more like a plane, so it has a higher bedding angle. This one is around 45 degrees, 
And so it better goes against the grain without chipping out. So most people using spoke shaves today for cabinet work prefer the round or the metal variety. Mr. Oberly's spoke shave of 1925 actually is bedded at 55 degrees, which makes it very good against the grain. Of course, he was working on match stocks in figured wood, often curly maple, for match rifles, at least according to my father. And as you can see, we've made this pretty smooth and pretty darn round. Good pair of tools. And really, by any other means, you would have probably as much time to set up a router and route four sides to a half or a quarter round. As I mentioned, This one that is cylindrical is great for a situation like this, and it allows me to got to put a little more blade down. Again, I'm reading my grain. The grain's going to be that way. I'm not going to come back uphill here. I'm going to turn this around and work from this direction now. Very hard to start right on the end. It takes a little bit of practice. But there, I took all the bandsaw marks out of that. It's smooth. I could uh, sand that now and it would uh, look great. I think that it may be a spoke shape belonging in everybody's shop. They will get you out of a lot of situations. For most people today, I think the metal shave is a better purchase because the higher bedding angle allows it to go against grain a little better. If you're a Windsor chair maker and working in Greenwood, a wood one is probably better. Thanks for visiting. I look forward for your return.